Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. Kyle was an experienced software developer with a particular interest in cybersecurity and the darker corners of the internet. His fascination often led him to explore layers of the internet that most would avoid, the dark web. It was during one of these explorations that he stumbled upon an invite-only forum known for its high level of anonymity and a reputation for harboring information not available on the more accessible parts of the internet. Eager to delve deeper and possibly uncover material for his upcoming cybersecurity conference presentation, Kyle used one of his secure identities to request access. To his surprise, the approval came within hours, along with a stern warning. Share nothing, record nothing, trust no one. The message was clear and typical for such forums, emphasizing the need for absolute secrecy and caution. Once inside, Kyle navigated through various threads. The forum was a goldmine of information, with discussions ranging from cryptic code exchanges and hacking tips to threads that were clearly illegal in nature. Kyle steered clear of these, focusing instead on gathering insights into cybersecurity threats and data breaches. After a few days of passive observation, he noticed a particular thread titled The Mirror Game gaining traction. It was tucked away in a less frequented part of the forum, and the posts were vague, often cryptic, with members discussing experiences and strategies for something they called mirroring. Intrigued by the lack of concrete information and the growing number of posts, Kyle decided to dig deeper. He posted a benign message asking for more details about the mirror game. Almost immediately, he received a private message from a user named Echo Decay, who wrote, The mirror game is not for the curious, but if you must know, be ready to see beyond yourself. Follow the link at midnight, and remember, you must play alone. Attached was a link which Kyle decided to investigate. His initial security checks on the link came up inconclusive. It was well masked and didn't trigger any immediate red flags, which piqued his curiosity even more. At midnight, Kyle, seated in his home office with the lights dimmed, clicked the link. The screen went black for a moment, then displayed a simple interface with a text box and a message. Type your deepest fear. The game begins once you confess. Hesitant but driven by his desire to uncover the secrets of this mysterious game, Kyle typed in, being trapped, unable to escape. He hit enter, and the screen changed to show a distorted digital mirror. It wasn't reflecting his actual surroundings, but showed a dark, animated version of a room that resembled his own. The digital version of Kyle in the mirror began to move independently, mimicking his earlier movements, but gradually becoming more erratic. The room around the digital Kyle started to shift, walls closing in, creating a smaller and smaller space. Kyle watched, fascinated and horrified, as his digital counterpart began to panic, clawing at the walls which were now just inches from the figure. Then, the real horror began. The walls of Kyle's actual room started to emit a low hum. He turned around slowly, his heart racing as he realized that his room seemed smaller. Books and items were closer to his desk than before. Was he imagining things, or was the game affecting his perception of reality? Panicking, Kyle tried to shut down his computer, but it was unresponsive. He tried to stand up, only to feel an intense vertigo that forced him back into his chair. The screen flickered, and a message appeared. The game has only just begun. Your fear is not contained within this mirror. As the digital room continued to shrink on the screen, Kyle felt the walls of his own room seemingly inch closer. The soft hum grew into a cacophony of whispers, each one echoing his typed confession. Unable to escape. Unable to escape. Kyle realized then that he had ventured too far into something beyond his control. Something that had latched onto his own fears. The story of Kyle's journey into the dark web was evolving into a personal nightmare. The boundary between the digital and the real blurring as the game drew him deeper into its dark heart. Kyle's pulse throbbed in his ears as the walls continued their imperceptible crawl inward. He turned back to his computer, desperately hoping to find a way to end the game. The figure in the digital mirror was now pressing its hands against the closing walls, a look of terror mirrored on Kyle's own face. Each movement he made was mimicked in the screen, binding him closer to his digital avatar. Frantically, Kyle typed into the forum's chat, pleading for help or a way to stop the mirror game. However, each entry was met with the same cryptic response. Complete the game. His room felt smaller, more oppressive. 
The books on his shelves trembled as if cold, and the light from his lamp flickered sporadically, casting long, haunting shadows across the room that seemed to creep towards him like dark tendrils. The digital room on the screen was nearly closed in, the walls mere inches from crushing the avatar. Kyle's heart raced as he felt a similar claustrophobia, a tangible pressure that seemed to push against his lungs. In a desperate attempt, Kyle managed to pull up the system's command line interface. His fingers flew over the keyboard, inputting commands to override the game. But every line of code was instantly corrupted, echoes of the whispered unable to escape, morphing into a mocking laughter that seemed to come from the computer itself. <laughs> the walls now were close enough that Kyle could touch both sides without fully extending his arms. He looked around in panic, realizing that his physical environment was conforming to the confines of the digital game. The whispering grew louder, an overwhelming chorus that seemed to feed on his fear. In a last, frantic effort, Kyle stood and grabbed his laptop, intending to smash it and end the game by any means necessary. But as he lifted it, the screen suddenly went black, and the room plunged into darkness. The humming stopped, the whispering ceased, and Kyle was left panting in the silent dark, clutching his dead laptop. He waited for what felt like an eternity, wondering if he had finally broken free from the game's grasp. Slowly, he reached out and felt the walls. They were back in their original place. Trembling, Kyle fumbled for his phone, using it as a flashlight. He scanned the room. Everything seemed normal, his belongings back where they belonged. Relief washed over him as he sank to the floor, the phone slipping from his hand. Just as he began to calm his breathing, the phone screen flickered and lit up with a new message. Game completed. Thank you for playing. It was then followed by a sinister addition. Round two begins now. Before Kyle could react, his environment darkened again, and the walls silently and swiftly moved in. This time, the movement was unmistakable and inexorable. Kyle scrambled to his feet, a scream caught in his throat as the walls closed in like a vice. He was trapped. The reality of his deepest fears manifested into a relentless, living nightmare that promised to replay over and over. The screen of his phone flickered one last time with a chilling new message. Unable to escape, aren't you? As the walls touched, the light from his phone was the last thing to be extinguished, leaving nothing but the sound of his muffled cries in the crushing darkness. Kyle's story became another legend whispered in the corners of dark web forums. Another player who challenged the mirror game and lost, his fate a stark warning to those daring to explore beyond the veil of the known. Amid the labyrinthine sprawl of urban life, Jonah, a freelance journalist with a penchant for the obscure and macabre, delved into phenomena that most dared not touch. His latest obsession was the dark underbelly of the internet, the dark web a place shrouded in anonymity and nefarious dealings. Jonah's intention wasn't to partake, but to uncover and expose the digital ghosts and ghouls of this hidden world to his increasingly curious readership. His journey led him to a dark web portal known as Abyssus, a site whispered about in hushed tones even in the darkest corners of internet forums. Abyssus was rumored to host a collection of experiences called The Descent, that promised users a unique journey tailored to their deepest fears and secrets, pulling data in ways that not even the most seasoned cybersecurity experts fully understood. The allure of such a story was irresistible to Jonah. With security measures in place, Jonah accessed Abyssus. The site greeted him with a simple text prompt, enter your fear. Skeptical but intrigued, Jonah typed isolation into the box his journalist's curiosity overtaking the trepidation tickling the back of his mind. The screen blinked once before loading a new page that read, Your descent begins now. Prepare to face your creation. A countdown started, and as it ended, the screen shifted to a live feed. Video footage from what appeared to be Jonah's own apartment. Chilled, Jonah looked around in disbelief. His actual apartment seemed unchanged, cozy and familiar, but on his screen, the room was different. Shadows clung tighter in the corners, and an unsettling silence pervaded. The digital version of his apartment seemed to pulse with a life of its own. Jonah watched as the camera angle shifted, exploring the apartment as if someone or something was controlling it. The feed moved down a hallway he recognized, but instead of leading to his bedroom, it opened into a vast, decrepit hall, dimly lit and lined with unmarked doors. 
Each door slowly opened as the camera approached, revealing scenes of profound isolation. A person screaming into the void of a vast desert, another trapped at the bottom of a dark well, and another still, adrift in the open sea with no land in sight. These images were not merely recordings, they felt visceral, as if each scenario was happening live, the subject's despair palpable. The feed returned to the image of Jonah's living room, but now, a figure sat on his couch, a shadowy mirror image of himself. The doppelganger stared directly into the camera, its eyes hollow with an inhuman despair. A voice, a distorted version of Jonah's, emanated from the feed. You are not alone in your fear. Suddenly, the live feed cut out, replaced by a map, with a blinking dot moving steadily toward what Jonah realized with a sinking heart was his location. The message updated, Your descent is personal. Meet your isolation. Jonah's phone buzzed, a notification from his security system alerting him to movement within his apartment. The cameras he had installed for safety showed the hallway leading to his living room, but they revealed nothing unusual. Yet the feeling of being watched, of being not alone, grew overwhelming. The sounds from the live feed seemed to bleed into reality. Faint echoes of the desert winds, the distant cries for help from the well, the lapping water from the sea, each growing louder, more insistent. Jonah's apartment felt smaller, the walls inching inward as panic set in. He realized then that the descent was more than a mere digital experience. It was a psychological invasion, a manifestation of his typed fear into his physical world. The boundaries between digital and reality blurred as Jonah struggled to understand if he was still watching the horror or living it. The door to his living room creaked open, as if on cue from the unseen script of Abyssus beckoning him to face whatever awaited on the other side. With his heart racing and every instinct screaming at him to flee, Jonah forced himself to walk towards the living room. His steps felt heavy, each echoing ominously in the suddenly oppressive silence of his apartment. As he reached the doorway, he paused, steeling himself for what he might find. Peering around the corner, Jonah saw his living room bathed in the dim light of the evening. The couch, his usual refuge, now seemed like a sinister trap. There, sitting motionless, was the shadowy figure from the live feed, a perfect, dark replica of himself. It stared ahead blankly, seemingly unaware of Jonah's presence. Swallowing his fear, Jonah stepped into the room. Who are you? He demanded, his voice shaking. The figure slowly turned its head to face him, its eyes hollow and empty, yet filled with an unimaginable sorrow. I am you. It replied in a voice that was both Jonah's and not, isolated beyond your deepest fears. The figure stood up, its movement stiff and unnatural. As it stepped towards Jonah, the room began to distort around them, the walls pulsating and contracting as if breathing. The furniture aged and decayed before his eyes, peeling away into nothingness, leaving them in a void that mirrored the desolate places he had seen in the feed. Jonah backed away, bumping into a wall that hadn't been there a moment before. Trapped, he watched as his doppelganger advanced, the room closing in around them until they were standing face to face. Your fear has created me, the figure whispered, and now it will consume you. The apartment dissolved completely, leaving Jonah in a vast, empty space that was neither his home nor the places he had seen on the live feed. There was nothing but darkness stretching infinitely in every direction, a perfect embodiment of isolation. The figure merged with the shadows, its form dissipating until all that was left was its voice, echoing in the void. Welcome to your descent. Jonah found himself alone in the darkness, no sign of his apartment, the figure, or any hint of the physical world he knew. He called out, but his voice was swallowed by the void. Time lost meaning. Whether minutes, hours, or days passed, Jonah could not tell. The isolation was complete and unending. Back in the real world, his live stream was still running. His viewers watched in horror and fascination as the feed showed Jonah's empty living room, the camera capturing the last moments before it too flickered and went dark. When concerned friends and the police later entered his apartment, they found it exactly as the viewers had seen, empty, no sign of forced entry, no sign of Jonah. Jonah's disappearance became a dark mystery, fuel for countless theories and discussions. His final live stream was dissected and analyzed, but no one could understand how he had vanished. In the deepest corners of the dark web, the legend of the descent grew, 
a cautionary tale whispered among those who dared to explore its shadows. In the vast, silent void, Jonah remained alone, a prisoner of his own fears, forever wandering in endless darkness, a fate he unwittingly chose when he typed a single word into a mysterious forum. His story, unresolved and haunting, left a chilling mark on the world, a reminder of the dark power of isolation and the depths it can reach into one's soul. Erica, a tech-savvy college student majoring in computer science, had always been intrigued by the layers of the internet that the average user doesn't see. Her interest wasn't just academic. Erica had a penchant for the thrill that came from uncovering things meant to stay hidden. It was this mixture of curiosity and bravado that led her to the dark web. Late one night, after her roommates had gone to sleep, Erica booted up her laptop and initiated the several layers of protection she'd set up. VPNs, TOR, the works. She knew the risks, but felt prepared. Her goal wasn't to engage with anything illegal. She just wanted to see for herself what was hidden in those shadowy depths. She navigated through various marketplaces and forums, marveling at the bizarre and sometimes disturbing items and services being offered. Eventually, she stumbled across a link that seemed out of place even for the dark web. It was a single, unmarked hyperlink on an otherwise blank page titled, Do You Dare? Driven by her insatiable curiosity, Erica clicked the link. Instantly, her screen went black, then text began to type itself across her screen. Welcome, Erica. Let's see if you can solve the puzzle. What followed was a series of riddles and codes. Erica, confident in her coding and hacking skills, eagerly began solving them one by one. With each riddle solved, the responses grew increasingly personal. The final riddle before the screen went black again was, What do you fear the most? Erica hesitated, but eventually typed in, Being alone. The screen refreshed to reveal a GPS coordinate and a time with a simple message, Prove it. Tomorrow. Midnight. Erica was torn. The logical part of her screamed that this was dangerous, a step too far, but another part of her, a deeper, darker part, craved to know what lay at those coordinates. After a night of restless deliberation, curiosity won out. She arrived at the coordinates the next night, a remote part of the local woods known for legends of hauntings and strange disappearances. The moon was shrouded by thick clouds, giving her only the beam of her flashlight to navigate the dense underbrush. At precisely midnight, Erica's phone buzzed. A new message on the screen read, Turn off your light and follow the path. You must walk alone. Her heart raced as she debated what to do next, but her feet moved almost on their own accord, guiding her deeper into the darkness. As she walked, the trees seemed to close in around her, the path narrowing until she was pushing through the undergrowth. Then, abruptly, the path opened into a clearing. In the center was an old, decrepit house that looked like it hadn't been inhabited for decades. Her phone buzzed again. Enter the house, Erica. Inside, you will face your fear. Taking a deep breath to steady her nerves, Erica stepped towards the house. Its windows were dark, gaping holes, and the door creaked ominously as she pushed it open. Inside, the air was stale, and the silence was suffocating. She could feel the weight of loneliness pressing down on her, the realization of just how alone she was becoming palpable. As she explored the house, her flashlight beam caught something in the dust on the floor, an array of footprints all leading into the basement. The door to the basement was ajar, inviting her to enter. Swallowing her rising fear, Erica moved towards the basement, each step echoing in the hollow silence of the house. Her phone buzzed one last time before the screen went completely dark. The battery suddenly drained. Go down, Erica. It's waiting. As Erica descended the creaky steps to the basement, the air grew colder and the darkness seemed to swallow her light. The door slammed shut behind her, plunging her into darkness as she reached the bottom of the stairs. The story of Erica's journey into the dark web and its terrifying invitation was far from over. As she stood alone in the pitch black, waiting for whatever lay in the depths to reveal itself. As Erica stood enveloped in the suffocating blackness of the basement, her heart pounded violently against her ribcage. She fumbled for her phone, hoping to use it as a light source, but it remained unresponsive, dead to her frantic touches. The air around her felt oppressively thick, filled with the musty, damp odors of mold and decay. Her breaths came out in short, visible puffs, the basement colder than the night air outside. Suddenly, a faint noise broke the silence, a soft, dragging sound that seemed to come from the far corner of the basement. 
Erica's blood ran cold. The sound grew steadily louder, as if something, or someone, was pulling itself across the rough concrete floor towards her. Frozen with fear, Erica considered rushing back up the stairs, but the slamming door echoed in her mind. She wasn't sure she could open it in time to escape whatever was approaching. Her back pressed against the cold wall. She slid along it, edging toward where she remembered the stairs were, her eyes straining in the darkness to see any hint of movement. Then, abruptly, the dragging sound stopped. Silence hung in the air, heavy and expectant. Erica held her breath, listening, waiting. A new sound filled the basement, a low guttural growl that seemed to reverberate through the very walls of the house. It was close, so close it felt as if it were right beside her ear. Without warning, the darkness was pierced by a small, dim light. An old television set in the corner of the basement flickered to life, casting a ghostly glow across the room. The screen was filled with static, but slowly an image began to resolve, a video feed of Erica herself standing frozen in the basement. Her heart hammering in her chest, Erica watched in horror as the camera angle on the TV changed, showing her from behind. She turned slowly in a circle, her flashlight's beam cutting through the darkness, but there was nothing behind her, no camera that she could see. When she faced the TV again, the image had changed. Now it showed the dark corner of the basement, and a figure was emerging from the shadows. It was a grotesque mimicry of a human, its limbs too long, its movements jerky and unnatural. As it crawled into the light, its features became clearer. It had a face, but it was a horrifying, twisted version of Erica's own. Its eyes, black and empty, seemed to stare directly into hers, a malevolent grin stretching across its face. The creature spoke, its voice a distorted echo of Erica's, found you. The TV flickered off, plunging the basement back into oppressive darkness. Erica, her entire body shaking, felt the air shift as the creature began moving towards her, its dragging, uneven gait, a nightmare sound in the gloom. Blind panic set in. Erica turned and ran, her hands outstretched, scrambling to find the stairs. Behind her, the creature's growl turned into a shriek of excitement, its movements quickening. Just as she felt its cold, clammy fingers brush against her arm, Erica's hands finally found the stair railing. She vaulted up the stairs, slamming her body against the door. It flew open, and she burst out into the night, not stopping to look back until she reached her car, her breaths coming in desperate gasps. Driving away, Erica's mind raced. The house, the basement, the creature, all burned vividly into her memory, a terrifying blur of reality and nightmare. The dark web had reached out into the real world, or perhaps it had dragged her into its shadowy depths. She knew one thing for sure. She had been marked by her encounter, a deep psychological scar that might never heal. The exploration into the dark web had started as a mere curiosity, a dare to confront the unknown. It ended with Erica fleeing from an embodiment of her deepest fears, forever changed, forever haunted by the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface of her world. Now watch this video, 